YouTube, it's Chris, welcome back. Today I wanna to talk to you guys about latency regarding dual PC setups mainly, but um, cloning uh, displays, right? And using full screen projection mode. Um, and also pass through and just general streaming. So if any of you guys have a secondary PC that you like to record or stream on, um, this will definitely affect you and this will be quite interesting. For the people that don't have a single streaming PC, you still might actually be interested in this video, especially when it comes to cloning. I've discovered something really weird and funky that I can't really explain. Um, there's some weird latency issue when it comes to cloning displays um, and the, it, it behaves differently when it's not GPU bound and when it is GPU bound. It's actually really, really interesting. So this video, I'll talk about the different latencies when it comes to trying to get a dual PC set up working and running properly and the different methods you can to capture the display on OBS on your streaming PC found some really interesting results when I cover with you guys. Now, some of you guys in the chat might go, just use a single streaming PC, it's the easiest. I mean, yes, definitely it is the easiest, but you do lose quite a lot of frames. By the time you wanna stream, record, you know, have like, you know, two cameras on, you know, having music in a web browser, maybe another web browser for notifications or something like that, and a whole bunch of other stuff. I genuinely actually considered going to a single streaming PC and I tested all of that one by one and I found it actually wasn't worth the trade-off for the FPS I'd lost. Even just streaming on a single PC with just a basic, really minimal stream setup, you still lose quite a few. So dual PC is still king. But the problem is nowadays we are very limited. If you have a really nice display, so you've got a 1080p 360 hertz, or you've got a 1440p 240 hertz, or even if you have one of the one and only, like I do, the Samsung G8, the 4K 240 hertz, you're really limited with capture cards, and that becomes a bit of an issue. Okay, especially if you want to. Um, is pass through because pass through is great. And I'll show you that right now. You do get a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of latency through pass through with capture cards. But that added latency is only content protection, HDCP or whatever it's called, and it's hardly anything. I've tested it myself. I'm not showing it in this video. Linus Tech Tips have covered it. Um, I believe some other people, like uh, you know, Tech yes City has tested it as well. It's a very, very minimal. Uh, things so pass through is ideal but we don't have capture cards that can do up to those um, refresh rates so it's very frustrating and here's where I'd say it's probably the most convenient and the easiest uh, streaming setup so you have your gaming PC here your streaming PC here your gaming monitor here your capture card here and OBS is on the uh, streaming PC right so in your graphics card you have an HDMI out which goes to from your graphics card which goes to the end of the capture card and then it goes out to the gaming monitor the problem with that is the capture cards that are out at the moment are only 4K 60, 1440p 144Hz and 1080p 240Hz. Now, beforehand, it was an issue doing this with actually using a G-Sync display or even FreeSync or whatever variable refresh rate, whatever you want to call it. Now, um, thankfully, Elgato has added a firmware update so you can do those things. But at the end of the day, you kind of have to be limited to these. Now, in saying that, you might think, oh, I've got, you know, a 1080p 360Hz monitor. Why don't I just put it in 240Hz mode and use pass through that way? Which you definitely could, but something that I noticed and I've discovered, and I was back in the Valorant optimization video that I did when I was trying to test 240Hz on my 360Hz display. And I've tested this on some of my other displays. If you don't run the display in the native refresh rate, okay, not the resolution, resolution's fine. Okay, the native refresh rate, so say you've got a 360 Hz 1080p and you put it into like, I don't know, you're putting it into 240 Hz, you'll actually get a lot more input lag than a native 1080p 240 Hz monitor. So you wouldn't really want to do that. I mean, you could, but there are other better ways. But I would say this is the most conventional way to go ahead and do it. Now that a lot of capture cards are supporting variable refresh rate, G-Sync, FreeSync, AMD, FreeSync, whatever you want to call it, you know, all sort of the same technology. but we are very limited with capture cards, which is really, really frustrating. So there are other ways to pass through the image. Um, there is NDI through network. Really don't recommend that. You actually lose a lot of FPS and I've done a video on that in the past, I believe. So that's not an option. What are our other options? So I'll cover our other options here. Other options are normal. So I just wanted to show you guys this here. This is a single streaming PS. Uh, set up normal because when I do some tests that I'm going to show you guys a little bit later with the latency in the frames Which you'll be interested in you need to understand this I know a lot of you might understand this but for the people that don't I want you to understand how this works This would be a single streaming PC setup and you would just have OBS on your single PC right now This is what you could do with cloning displays Whether it be through the Nvidia control panel or AMD control panel or the Windows control panel 
Let's go to the multiple displays. You would clone this with two. Quite simple. Okay. So in saying that, how the clone system works is you've got your gaming PC, streaming PC, you've got your gaming monitor and your capture card, right? Both of these can, are connected to a, um, you know, display port to the graphics card and HDMI to the graphics card of the gaming PC. And you use the uh, graphics control panel or Windows control panel or whatever to clone these two. And you just have OBS on the streaming PC. The other option, the problem is with cloned, okay, is you actually get screen tearing. So if you don't want your recordings on your stream PC, right? And if you don't want your stream on the stream PC to have screen tearing, this isn't really conventional. And I've also discovered a bit of a latency issue with this as well, which I'm gonna cover very, very shortly. I found quite interesting, um, very, very frustrating. Now you have another thing is just full screen projector mode, which you can kind of have your cake and eat it too. So you can have a streaming PC, right? So you can't use pass through because if you've got one of these high, higher end monitors, right? You can't use pass through. You can use full screen projector mode. So your gaming PC, streaming PC, gaming monitor, capture card. Okay. Same thing again, the gaming monitor and the capture card are both connected to the gaming PC with a separate cable. You have OBS on your game PC, a really, really minimal setup and you full screen project this, what you see on here to the monitor on this. You don't have them cloned. You just use OBS and game capture. Okay. So you only lose frames from using a game capture in OBS and you have a really, really basic setup. And then you also have OBS on your stream PC, which will actually just see what that sees. So basically you're using a really small lightweight version of OBS on your gaming PC to full screen project the game through game capture to then pass it over to um, the uh, capture card to the stream can see it. Hopefully that sort of makes sense. Now, this is how most streamers do it if they want to have a dual PC set up because you, that way you have full control over what the stream sees. With a clone, you sort of don't. Um, normal you do because you can just do game capture versus like desktop capture. But um, another nice thing about full screen projection mode is there is no screen tearing. So it'll just, ca it'll be similar to what AMD's uh, replay buffer or recording feature does through their graphics software. And same with Nvidia's shadow play. It'll just grab, you know, whatever you've set it to, whether it be 1080p 60 or whatever, it'll just grab that and you won't see any screen tearing in the recording at all. So this is probably some of the most ideal but it gets really interesting how it behaves on different resolutions, which is why I'm doing this video. I've always really struggled and been switching between all of these for the best possible recording and stream. And I've never really, really been happy. And I think the only solution to that is going to be if we can actually get higher end capture cards that are able to do 1080p 360 hertz you know, 1440p, 240 hertz and 4K 240, which I doubt is going to happen with G-Sync support or variable refresh rate or free sync support. I doubt that's going to happen anytime soon. People have been wanting and asking for it for ages, but I don't think it's going to happen soon. So let's get covered with the latency results. And I'm going to show you guys something really interesting. It's going to be a bit of a workaround with your head. All right, let's get started. So I don't want you guys to get too confused. Just look at this, 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 and this. Okay. And I've kind of done this in order. All right. So for this, so we've done Kovacs in 1080p. This is just with the like, say, I'll just show you guys. So this is would be just like a uh, normal setup, okay, that I've done a latency test on. Now I did have another display just rendering in the background doing nothing. That doesn't affect your latency or FPS at all. If, if people are curious, I get a lot of people that ask me, hey, having dual monitors or triple monitors, does that affect FPS? No, it doesn't. Yes, if you've got Chrome in the background on another tab doing something ever so slightly, it may do depending on your system, but um, no. So that's, um, just wanted to mention that. But anyway, coming back to here, right? So just normal Kovacs 1080p. Now I did cap the game and you might've seen in the background some of the latency tests I was doing just as a background for this video. The frames were capped at 387 because that's just what I had it at the time. And I can get a very easy stable 387 on 1080p and 4K. So in 1080p Kovacs, uh, we got 6.35 latency. The latency with 1080p cloned to the capture card was 6.36. So that's uh, within benchmark variation, totally fine. So no latency difference here at all. It's gonna get really interesting when we get onto 4K. Let's do the same on 4K. All right, so um, 
Fairfax in 4K, we have about an extra millisecond, just over an extra millisecond input lag than 1080p. That's with a 4090. Uh, that would be completely different if you had a weaker card. I'd imagine this would be a little bit higher. And that's all got to do with GPU usage, why the latency is coming up. You're rendering more pixels. Okay. Then we go to cloned. Something horrible and weird happens here. Okay. We get a lot more latency, like a lot, a lot, a lot. Now, the only thing that I can think of is like a bandwidth issue. I've tried to find a program I could measure the bandwidth with, but I can't. I've not been able to find anything. So if anyone wants to do a collab on this video with me or knows anything about this, I'd really, really appreciate it, okay? Um, very, very annoying. Now, Kovacs in 4K with full screen projection mode within benchmark variation, that is actually 7.42. Apologies about it being cut off there. Okay, this is uh, basically within benchmark variation and you're not really losing anything there. And like I said, we were able to get a constant 387 FPS. Now you do lose a little bit of FPS with full screen projection mode. And I'm going to show you that in a more GPU uh, bound situation with a more GPU heavy game. And I'll do that next. But yeah, so in this way, it actually gets even more interesting, right? So coming back to the 1080p results, full screen projection mode in 1080p makes the latency go higher. Do you see where I'm getting a little confused here with the results that I have? It, it's sort of not making sense right so in 4k there's not a latency difference between playing the game normally and having obs with game capture full screen projecting it to the uh, capture card but then on 1080p there's higher latency so you're better off doing cloned now if you guys are curious why i didn't test 1440p 1440p has the same behavior as 1080p now guys i've tried so many different things i've tried a different capture card I've tried different firmwares on the character card that I'm using. I've tried different drivers. I've tried different displays. Trust me, I've tried everything. And it pretty much very, very similar results towards all different games, game engines, and things like that. It's kind of got to do with, I don't even know, to be honest with you. It's very, very confusing. And here's where it's going to get even more. You'll see the same sort of behavior on a completely different engine. Okay. So... I'm going to show you Modern Warfare 2 and why Modern Warfare 2 because it's a very very GPU hungry game. Now this time I didn't cap the FPS and yes there are a couple of different things when it comes to latency all right we need to keep in mind. Yes there is higher latency on lower FPS to a point but there is also added latency when you have higher GPU usage. So you're going to have higher GPU usage in 4k than 1080p so just to keep that in mind before we have a look at these results so the red we have fps and the blue is obviously latency lower being better and higher being better when it comes to fps let's look at 1080p with modern warfare 2. so you guys might have seen in the background there where i tested it and i want it to be fairly consistent all right it's 1080p modern warfare 2 we've got about you know 10.9 milliseconds just playing the game normally like I'm just looking at that spot that I was looking at to measure it. Okay. When we come to clone, we get actually lower latency, but that's within benchmark variation. So exactly the same behavior as Kovacs, right? Now we are losing some frames with cloned um, just a tad, all right? And uh, it is more blatantly obvious when it comes to a higher resolution. And you'll see in a little bit, because if you see normal modern warfare, we've got two uh, 270 playing normally and 240 clone so it becomes a lot more of an obvious issue um, in that scenario all right so modern warfare 2 in 1080p in full screen projection mode the latency goes up a lot okay and we're actually losing more frames than cloned on 1080p okay right now let's go to modern warfare 2 in 4k so that's our latency and that's that's about right you know we have a couple more milliseconds in 1080p because we're rendering a lot more pixels so we've got the GPU usage and we've also got the lower frame rate. Okay, so that's why we're getting um, that. So that's not too bad though. 270 FPS on 4K, that's quite nice when you think about it. Now let's go to cloned. Here's where the latency goes horribly wrong. And it's exactly the same behavior on Kovacs. You know, very, very confusing, but th that's just how it is. And I've tried different drivers. And you see, we lose FPS just like we lose FPS here, but we lose a lot more. Well, because we are in 4K and it's a lot more GPU heavy. Now here's where it gets even more interesting and it's the same thing as Kovacs. So yeah, in full screen projection mode, um, we actually get more frames than cloning. Like, and I've tested this a lot. I'm telling you guys, I've tested this on different engines and I've tested this on different games, blah, 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 and different drivers. And we don't get that much of a latency. We maybe get like 
just under one millisecond latency hit for full screen projection mode. Okay. And um, there's no screen tearing for the streaming and recording on the, on the streaming PC, which is ideal. So here's where I'm confused and here's where I'm trying to point out in the video. Why is it on 1080p? Okay. When I clone and it's the same on 1440p, by the way, with the 4090, there is no added latency. It's negligible. Okay. Yeah. There's a small FPS hit or whatever. Okay. Then when it comes to 4K, if I clone, there's a horrible latency. Okay. So that has to probably be something to do with bandwidth. And I was talking to my friend Narf in Discord the other day. We we're talking about this. Because here is where it gets even more interesting. Why is it that when I use full screen projection mode in 1080p, I take quite a big latency hit? Okay. If you compare this to this to this, right? But then in 4K, when I use full screen projection mode, I don't really take a big latency hit. All right. Do you see what I'm saying here? It's where it kind of gets confusing. So 1080p, I take a big latency hit on full screen projection mode. We're in 4K, I don't. And 1080p, right? Um, I don't take a, I, in 4K, I take a big uh, latency hit with being cloned. So, you know, some weird behavior going on here. Um, and then, you know, 1080p, I take a big latency hit when it comes to full screen projection mode. So anyway, I'll just put some of the testing I was doing in the background while I talk for the rest of this video. But yeah, um, this is something that's kind of been bugging me and I've really been testing and noticing and wanting to test this a lot more since I switched to my 4K 240Hz monitor. I wanted to do a dedicated video on that soon. But um, something that I kind of can't get my head around, I get with the cloning thing maybe because something to do with bandwidth. But what I don't understand is uh, why in full screen projection mode, there's just a lot more latency on 1080p with 4K, it's fine. Now, so this is where it gets really confusing. I think ideally, pass through is the way to go. If you're on 1080p and 1440p, cloning's fine if you don't care about screen tearing in your streaming and recordings. Um, but if you're on 4K, you definitely don't want to use clone with a good card. You want to use full screen projection mode, but you don't want to use full screen projection mode on 1080p because there's quite a bit of latency here. It's, it's quite annoying, uh, really, really annoying and confusing. The proper solution is going to be uh, way better capture cards in the future that do, uh, you know, a higher hurt pass through. Um, I doubt that's going to happen anytime soon. So for now, it's kind of really annoying. It's like, okay, I'll have to... Uh, you know, if I'm on 1080p I'm, or 1440p, I'm better off cloning. Where if I'm 4K, I'm better off using full screen projection mode. But I don't ever want tearing, screen tearing my streaming or recording. So there is one nice thing about having a single streaming PC. You don't have to worry about this sort of a thing. Like you just take a hit to your uh, latency and FPS, no matter what you're doing in that sit. But you never have to worry about, uh, you know, screen tearing. Even if you play with a V-Sync off and uncapped, you never have to worry. But you're going to take an FPS hit, but you never have to worry about screen tearing in like your GeForce experience or, if, or in your AMD Radeon uh, recording software or your OBS uh, streaming or recording software. You never have to worry about screen tearing in your single uh, stream stream PC. But with Jules, dual PC, it's more complicated than that. And as you can see on these different resolutions, it gets even more confusing. Um, now, the results may be a little bit different on 14. So say someone with a really weak card, like a 2060, might get the same results in 1440p that I do on 4K because they have a weaker RAM graphics card. But there's no way for me to know that without it being tested. But anyway, guys, I just want to sort of cover this video um, and just talk to you guys about this and show you guys the results that I have. Something that I can't quite get my head around um, and something that's just really, really interesting. I thought it might interest you guys as well. Maybe it would help you out in um, a way to go about things at the end of the day. But um, uh, at the end of the day, I still believe that I'm probably just going to use full screen projection mode no matter what. Now, I have had issues with full screen projection mode. If you don't have VSync set to application controlled in NVIDIA control panel or your AMD control panel, you will get screen tearing um, in the uh, capture card going to the streaming PC. So that's one way to get around that. Um, and it's have some horrible issues where sometimes full screen projection mode would randomly just look like it's 30 fps but i do believe that was to a, due to being a too higher card graphics card overclock when i turned it down that, that issue kind of went away so anyway guys hope you enjoyed the video um like share and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one